The Catholic Uprising. We are approaching our third annual Retreat at Sea, and it's time for you to join the Catholic Uprising. From February 8th to the 15th, join Michael Voris and a crowd of other faithful Catholics for a week-long retreat away from the world. The warfare never stops. Arm yourselves with the truth by clicking on the link and signing up for the Retreat at Sea today. Hello everyone and welcome to the Vortex, where lies and falsehoods are trapped and exposed. I'm Michael Voris, and here it is at long last, Election Day in the United States. One last chance to send the diabolical Obama agenda packing. The last chance Americans will ever have to take a swipe at all that hope and change garbage so many were so happy to swallow in 2008. And what's at stake? Well, control of the United States Senate, that's what. If Republicans can manage to win a net of just six seats, and as of the publishing of this vortex, most indications are they will do just that, with some outlier late weekend polls suggesting they may even net seven and possibly eight, they will be able to stop the Obama train dead on the tracks, actually derail it. With 51 or more seats out of the 100 in the U.S. Senate in the control of the GOP, and the U.S. House of Representatives likely to turn even more Republican, Obama will have zero help in D.C. He is largely a victim of his own success. He rammed through a still very unpopular health care bill so closely identified with him that it bears his name in the popular mind, Obamacare. He managed to do that with the help of a Democratic-controlled Congress, and now, four years later, it appears his party will pay the ultimate price, losing control of both houses of Congress. And all over the Western world, faithful Catholics are cheering, many of them tuning into Fox News to watch the final act of the four-year drama. Obama gets slammed, the devil is defeated, and all will once again be right with the world. Or so the story goes, but not so fast. First, yes, whenever Obama loses anything, anything at all, it's a good day. When his diabolical train is stalled or derailed, it's never bad news, but it might be deceptive news. In fact, it is a classic case of breaking out the champagne too early. See, many of these Republicans who are winning or slated to win are hardly paragons and promoters of the natural law or anything even mildly resembling supernatural virtue. Yes, they oppose Obama, but that doesn't mean that they stand firm against other forms of evil. There's been a more than understandable tendency among faithful Catholics to equate Obama with evil, as if he embodied evil, personified it. And here's the point, and he alone personifies it. That's wrong-headed. And it is this trap that faithful Catholics must avoid. Holiness and moral order is not going to be restored to a society because a less evil party defeats a more evil party in one election cycle. Many of those Republicans are supporters of abortion in all sorts of various stages. They support the militant homosexual agenda and all the like. They virtually all support birth control and have no problem with the provision of Obamacare that forces the church to pay for birth control. The Republicans are more like Democrats light than the opposition. Sure, there are things they totally split over with the Democrats, and most of those things are economic and foreign policy issues, but when it comes to the issues that matter the most, family, life, virtue, etc., there is only a mild distinction between the Dems and the Republicans. For example, let's just do a little projection here, shall we? With the GOP in control of the U.S. Senate, that means they will control the Senate Judiciary Committee, which approves or rejects any judge's nominations Obama will send up to the Hill for approval. Now, Obama ain't going to be sending up pro-life judges anytime soon, you can bet on that. All of these lower court judges, the ones that go on every day, are every one of them are going to be in favor of continuing the slaughter of children in the womb and calling sodomy marriage. How much opposition do you really think a GOP-controlled Senate is going to offer to these nominees? None or close to it. Then, of course, probably within the year, two at the absolute most, will come the Battle Royale, the U.S. Supreme Court. Most likely, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, who's aging by the second, will hang up her robe, and all hell will break loose in the Senate. Why? 
because Obama will nominate some off-the-wall, screaming liberal, child-killing, sodomy supporter, and the Republicans in the Senate will scream and wail and rent their garments, some of them seriously, others for show for their constituents back home. The outcry and the lamentations and the wailing will be so mournful that Obama's nominee will either withdraw or be flat out rejected by the pro-life GOP majority Senate. Then, in true Hegelian form, a compromise candidate will be sent up the hill by the White House, one who is more moderate, has a sterling reputation for impartiality among his or her peers, and is seen to be neutral and considerate and therefore acceptable. Everyone will be sick and tired of all the battling from the first nomination fight, and Obama will know that. And then to avoid the label of obstructionist, the Republican senators will reluctantly fall into line and vote for the more fair-minded nominee, and he or she will go to the bench of the highest court in the land with something like a 67 to 33 approval vote in the Senate, where he or she can keep Roe v. Wade nicely in place and Lawrence versus Texas firmly ensconced, and it will have been done with a Republican-controlled Senate. The devil has many ways of winning. He will use Obama until Obama is no longer useful, and then he will find another even if it's a Republican-controlled Senate. You don't fight evil with lesser evil. You fight it with holiness, personal holiness, where you, not your neighbor, not someone else, you pay the price and carry the cross. None of us as individuals can fix the country or the culture. And while it's only natural for people to want to put someone in office who seems like they will be able to do it, the candidate, don't get too carried away with this celebration of Obama losing his grip, somewhat. It isn't Obama's grip faithful Catholics should be ultimately concerned with. It's Satan's, and the only way to loosen that grip is to be a saint. So enjoy the probable repudiation of Obama for what it's worth, which is something, but not what it looks like. God love you. I'm Michael Voris. In a world called Earth, which is sort of mostly green and belongs to God. Well, it, it's actually mostly blue, like 71% blue. Comes an all new adventure, all about nature. Watch our new show, God's Blue Earth. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, sure, sure, sure thing. Watch our new show, God's Green Earth where this guy, Rodney, talks about exciting things such as trees, birds, clay, bread, and goats. Cause nature, discover exotic places like this park, someone's kitchen, the sky, a swimming pool, some guy's backyard, and this majestic mountain range. Watch the CMTV crew drink unpasteurized goat's milk. Oh, really? It's good. Yeah, it's really it's good. It's store-bought milk. Strut like they got no cares in the world. And make popcorn! Witness the totally believable performances as our actors react to the blistering heat, pain and suffering, farm animals and cute kitties. Learn valuable skills like how to water plants and then watch them grow. Enjoy 13 episodes shot in full 1080 HD, which is a huge step up from our old cameras. Ew. Starring our very beautiful and talented host of God's Green Earth, Rodney Pelletier. What do you think, yeah? This guy, the Wolf Pack, AKA the Wolf Sisters. Seriously, their last name is Wolf. And this other guy. So sign up for a premium account and tune in this October for God's blue or green earth.
Cause nature. <laughs>